There seems to be a lot of confusion going around, and this confusion has to do with the huge difference between tolerance and acceptance. We usually develop weekly themes here on the channel. It often happens organically. I have made the joke before about the magic woke eight ball, how social justice warriors and so-called journalists in the mainstream media wake up every morning and instead of brushing their teeth first thing in the morning, they consult their magic woke eight ball. Oh, I love caressing my ball. Please magic woke eight ball, allow me to shake you and guide me to what topic I need to propagate Gandice today. Even though I make jokes about it, I don't think that theory is far from the truth. It seems the mainstream media or anyone associated with the agenda, it seems like they coordinate together and figure out what woke cause they're going to push for the week. If you listen to these people all day, every day like I do, you begin to notice they all say exactly the same thing. It's as if there are talking points memos that are sent out, and all social justice warriors, they just read the talking points verbatim. Last couple of weeks, all we have heard about is the need for gun control. We must protect the children. We must take away guns. I also have another solution. I have a way to ensure no child is ever shot at school again. Let's just shut down all schools in the name of safety and keep all kids locked in their homes. That way they're safe. They're still focusing on gun control, but since the beginning of June, a renewed push to an old cause has been at the forefront of the woke agenda. The month of June is now considered Gay Christmas. The entire month is dedicated to the LGBT community. I said this the other day, but think about how fucked up this is. I have no problem with Pride Month. If the LGBT want to take a month to celebrate their lifestyle, go for it. I don't care. But we have two days on the calendar to honor the military, and we have 30 days to honor a lifestyle. Doesn't seem right to me, but what the hell do I know? The origins of Pride Month, it dates back to 1969 in the Stonewall Riots. In subsequent years, Pride Marches would take place on June 28 to commemorate the Stonewall Riots. But just like all things social justice, you give them an inch and they take a fucking mile. It's never enough. One day a year turned into a week, then two weeks, next thing you know, an entire month is dedicated to the LGBT lifestyle. A few minutes ago, I said there's a huge difference between tolerance and acceptance. For example, let's say your neighbors have a child, a teenager, 15, 16 years old. He suffers from mental illness. He's prone to erratic behavior, in some cases, maybe even violent behavior. He's always in trouble. You suspect that it's possible that he's turned to drugs. Now, you can accept his illness. You can sympathize with the kid and his parents. Maybe you're even willing to help in whatever way you can. But it doesn't mean that you're going to tolerate this 16-year-old kid hanging out with your 12-year-old son. You don't want him influencing your young son. Four years is a big difference at that age. Young kids, they tend to look up to older kids. Now, you can accept the neighbor's kid and his problems, but it doesn't mean you're going to tolerate him bringing his problems into your family. The wife with two kids that divorces the alcoholic father. She can accept his disease. She can accept that he has a problem with the booze. She can accept that maybe he needs help. Help. she might even still love him. But it doesn't mean she will tolerate his behavior. It doesn't mean she will tolerate him around the kids. When the LGBT movement first started, it was all about acceptance. We just want to live the lifestyle of our choosing. We want to be accepted and to be left alone to live our private lives. They didn't want to be discriminated against for their sexual orientation, which is fine. That's the way it should be. But again, just like with all things social justice, they take that inch, stretch it into a mile. The message behind the LGBT movement today is tolerance, accommodation. You are going to change your ways to accommodate us. You are going to allow transgender men to compete against women as long as they claim to identify as a woman. 
Most people accept members of the LGBT community for who they are. At the same time, those same people have little tolerance for it. That doesn't mean they discriminate. It doesn't mean they have hatred for the LGBT community. It means they don't want it in their personal lives. They don't want to be associated with it. They don't want to endorse the lifestyle. This should be considered acceptable. We all have the right to our own opinion. But when it comes to the LGBT movement, the expectation is 100% compliance. Five players on the Tampa Bay Rays, they are finding out about compliance. Saturday night, the Tampa Bay Rays as an organization chose to celebrate the gay gay. Part of this celebration was including that fucking rainbow on players' uniforms. You can see it right here. Nice little rainbow on their hat and sleeves. We here in Tampa are down with the gay gay. Please accept our application into Woke U so we can be educated on all things woke. Handful of players on the roster, they decided they weren't comfortable promoting the LGBT movement. They refused to chase the rainbow. That should have been the end of story. I don't see the WNBA forcing its league full of LGBT warriors to wear and promote Christianity. If players in Major League Baseball are uncomfortable supporting the LGBT movement, why should they be vilified for it? You already know the reason. Compliance is not a request, it's a demand. The expectation is 100% compliance. Leave your personal opinions at home. When you're in public, you will endorse our lifestyle. This group of five players in Tampa said they weren't comfortable endorsing the LGBT movement because of their Christian faith. And this, this is the reason the mainstream media and woke shit fucks are in their woke feelings about this. You mentioned the word Christian Christ. Hell, even the name Chris. It causes the Twitter virgins to become flaccid. If a social justice warrior is named Chris by his parents, he asks people to call him Chrissy. Please don't call me Chris. It too closely resembles Christ. I am more afraid of Jesus than I am of seeing a naked woman. And you know how much my woke brothers fear a naked woman. If this group of five players in Tampa had simply refused to comment about why they chose to not chase the rainbow, this would likely be a non-story. But when they use their Christian faith as the reason, it set off the woke alarm. Suddenly, all these shit fucks who constantly preach about tolerance become intolerant. Hmm, imagine that. Jack Flaherty, pitcher for the Cardinals, called these players an absolute joke. Now, out of curiosity, I wanted to see if the brain dead over at Deadspin was covering this story. Imagine my surprise when I see the following headline on Deadspin. Rays of darkness. Five Rays players remove pride patches and hide behind religion. So let me get this straight. You want these five players to practice tolerance when it comes to your beliefs. But when it comes to their own personal beliefs, you want to be intolerant. Why are social justice warriors intolerant towards the Christian faith more than any other faith, more than any other religion? Because the Bible calls homosexuality a detestable sin. They're also more comfortable going after the Christian faith because it's deemed acceptable by the mainstream. Now let me ask you this. If a group of five Muslim players refuse to wear the rainbow due to their faith, do you think we would be seeing any media outrage? If this had been done by five black Muslim players, do you think we would hear one word from the mainstream media or woke Twitter? No, because they would be too afraid of being labeled racist. But when it's a group of white Christian players, it's open fucking season. Headline over at SB Nation, Ray's pitcher Jason Adams' homophobia undercuts every message of welcome on Pride Night. Why are we expected to bend over backwards to tolerate your lifestyle? If you want to be gay, go be gay. No one cares. The problem comes when you want to shove your sexuality in our face. 
Brian Ruby is a former Major League Baseball player. He came out as gay last September. He was interviewed by USA Today, and he called the actions of these five players sad and infuriating. He claimed by these five players not wearing the rainbow, it sends the message that gay people aren't welcome in baseball. He also claimed they were using Jesus to discriminate against gay people. <laughs> Here we go again. Another shit fuck being confused at the difference between tolerance and acceptance. Brian Ruby claimed these players refusing to endorse the LGBT lifestyle is a bad look for Major League Baseball, which is 100% bullshit. Celebrating Pride Month is a bad look for baseball. Shoving the LGBT movement down our throat is a bad look for baseball. People attending baseball games, they don't give a shit about the sexuality of the players. They don't care if the players go home and make sweet love to a broom handle. The only thing that matters is their performance on the field. The same people demanding our tolerance are the purveyors of intolerance. Don't take my word for it. Go ask Brendan Donovan. This kid's a rookie. Over the weekend, he had the breakout performance so far of his career. But that doesn't matter to the woke shit fucks. You see, over 10 years ago, when he was 13 or 14 years old, Brendan Donovan violated the second woke commandment. He was joking around with his friends on social media, and he used a homophobic slur. The tweets were discovered in the middle of his breakout game the other night. Some lonely loser with no life was watching Brendan Donovan break into the major leagues and dug through his Twitter profile to find something to offend him. To make matters worse, Brendan Donovan was asked about the tweets by the useless media after the game, and he apologized. He apologized. What is the golden rule on this channel? I'm not talking about the useless woke commandments. I'm talking about the golden rule. You never apologize to social justice warriors. Ever. Never. Even if you're wrong, you don't apologize. If graduates of woke you are offended, you are always in the right. I have a lot of respect for all five players in Tampa for standing up for their own beliefs. I am tired of this expectation that I am forced to tolerate your lifestyle. I can accept it. I don't have to tolerate it. If I'm in the business of baking wedding cakes, I shouldn't be forced to bake a cake for a transgender wedding. Go to the gay baker. If the gay baker doesn't want to bake cakes for a heterosexual wedding, he shouldn't have to. The overwhelming majority of people classified as LGBT are good people. They're as fed up with this bullshit as we are. Their lifestyle, their community has been taken over and used to promote a twisted agenda. The people behind this, they know exactly what they're doing. They are trying to make members of the LGBT community the enemy. They shove this in your face, hoping it will incite hatred. Why? The same reason they do it with minorities, to keep everyone divided. They use it as a diversion to keep us distracted from what they're really trying to accomplish, which is the destruction of the American system and way of life. But let me know what you think. Five players in Tampa take a stand, and the mainstream media, along with woke Twitter, tries to destroy their credibility and their Christian faith. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.